looking at going into 2020. Uh, first scripture I'm going to touch on is Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Billy Ann worked this morning and made sure I had it on there. So I'm going to be reading from the King James. That is not my notes. Y'all know I do not read from the King James a lot. Uh, do y'all, some of you might know Schofield, who Schofield is, the theologian and the teacher. Uh, I have a study Bible, a King James study Bible, and I love reading Schofield's notes on Scripture. If you haven't had the opportunity of just taking a look at some of his teachings on Scripture and some of the theology, that man's sound. That man is a beast when it comes to loving God and really getting into a Scripture. I love it. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and lean not unto thine own understanding. And all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. Simply trust in the Lord with all thy heart. With all your heart, trust in the Lord. Hmm. The word trust, that's a really, really, really big word. It's easy to say. How about to live by it? Well, I trust you. I trust you so much. And then what happens whenever the wind changes a little bit, or the currents change, or something happens? Do our responses to that really look like we trust? Uh, I've shared in my office, I have this massive area that's a whiteboard that I, I, in working with people, we process out loud a lot of the times. And, and if we write down what we say, we read it out loud, it's like, but that's not what I mean. You know, a lot of the time. I'm like, well, then let's find out what you mean. Let's find out what's going on inside. Because we say the word, we say trust. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. We say it, but then whenever the wind changes directions or it rains a little bit or maybe a storm, do we respond that way? Right. Or do we react a little differently? On the board, I have trust written out as um, trust is having a positive belief about another's intentions or motives toward us where potential risk is involved. Having a positive belief about our intentions or the motives toward us where potential risk is involved. And out of that trust, we move forward no matter what the world tells us. Can we live this way? Can we truly trust in God with all of our heart and lean not on our understanding? That means lean on Him. That means lean on His Son. That means lean on Jesus Christ, the very blood of our Lord and Savior. That means lean, lean on the Holy Spirit, which yes. is dwelling inside of each one of us. Can we do that with all of our heart? Prior to Christ, <coughs> hmm, there's no way I could. I couldn't even trust me. Think about it. I could not. I couldn't trust my own thoughts. I would, I would lie to myself and rationalize it and look for support to validate the lie that I just told myself? Anybody relate? Anybody ever do that? Man, that's insane! No, that's, that's normal. He tells us to guard our hearts. He tells us to take every thought captive and to make them obedient. He, yeah. he, he gave us instructions, and then he sent his son to die for our sins for that gift of reconciliation and the resurrection of the Son to give us the gift of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Right? Amen. So we have this, this indwelling of the Holy Spirit so that we can actually begin to trust. Again, big word. Easy to say. Easy to say. Oh, I trust you. Give me your keys. Right? And Sheila says, Kenny, I love you. I trust you. Give me your keys. Why? You already stole my car. <laughs> It would fly. <laughs> going down! <laughs> oh my goodness. And I justified it. <laughs> to my own self. I just have, Has anybody here ever done anything wrong? Just out of curiosity. If you've done one thing wrong in your life, can you raise your hand for me? At least just one thing. I'm kind of curious. Okay, cool. I'm not asking you to confess to me, I promise I'm not. 
But if you can acknowledge that you've done one thing wrong, that gives you a little bit more freedom. The enemy says, don't, don't, don't let people know that you do something wrong. Don't talk about it. The Bible says otherwise. Hmm. See, we try to hide it. We try to stay away from it when we've fallen short or whenever we've consciously chosen, chosen to do something wrong. See, if we hide that, then we actually don't need Jesus. Uh-oh. Yeah, I've never done anything wrong. I don't need Jesus. I choose to love him just because he's Jesus. No, no, I'm sorry, guys and ladies. I need Jesus. I can't do it. Amen. I can't. My whole heart without Jesus is hard and selfish. It is. It really is. You know, I know some of y'all find that hard to believe. But it is. With Jesus, everything changes. My heart, my intentions, my character, my actions, my thoughts, my focus, my motives, it changed. Not because of me, but because of him in me. Following that? Does that make sense? Can you relate with that? Can you see that in me? Moving forward into this year, the next scripture I want to look at is Ephesians 4, 21 through 24. Mm. If so be that ye have heard him, so if you've actually heard him, and have been taught by him, as the truth is in Jesus, that ye put off old concerning the former conversation, the old man. Put aside the old self is another way that it says that. If you've heard Jesus and been taught in Jesus, the truth that is in Jesus, put aside your old self, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lust. And that deceitful lust, when we hear the word lust, we, we, we go to an extreme, but lust, lust is across the board. Right. Yeah. Things, power, money, attention, yeah. lights on Facebook, food. We can lust for so many things of the flesh. Yeah. The, the lust is, is what the flesh is after. Right? Amen. That validation and that external attention. Pay attention to me. Look at me. Look at me. I'm good at that. I am. That was horrible because I was never happy. I was never satisfied. I was never fully content. I was never at peace when I was trying to get all the attention for me. That's some of that loss. Even eating. Y'all know I could, you know, God brought me to a place where, where I laid down my drugs, my alcohol. The other things of that world, I've been sober for over 32 years by the grace of God. Yes. By the prayer started with this one over here. Yeah. Right? That's God. Okay? So that, man, that was such a huge process. It's still, I'm dense. I don't know if y'all noticed, my skull's kind of thick. Where's James at? He's not in here. Oh, he did. He heard me. <laughs> it takes me a little bit to learn something. Dwayne can relate with this. <laughs> he's committed it does so I'm clean, I'm sober, it still takes a while for me to grow, but it still was only by the grace of God and by the blood of his son that I got clean and sober the world I come from is not clean and sober so everything had to change my thinking, I had to be renewed right and she was praying over us. I mean her, her prayers over her husband's family that's what her oh my god I'm surprised that woman can stand up straight. She had to pray so hard. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. <laughs> Y'all know Miss Ruby, her mom? <laughs> that woman comes in here and I still stand up straight. <laughs> 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 it's awesome. Those prayers and that love, you know, for us. For us. That didn't make sense. I come from a world that's not for somebody else. It's for me. What's in it for me? Right? But that's not what Jesus teaches. Look. If so, you've heard him and have been taught by him as the truth is in Jesus, that ye put off concerning the former conversations the old man. Again, putting off the old self, which is corrupt according to the deceitful laws, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind, and that ye put on the new man Put on the new self, which after God 
is created in righteousness and true holiness. Put on the new self. We're coming to an end of the year. You know, if we want to start creating and making habits, I get the opportunity of helping people create micro habits, what we call micro habits, create patterns, healthy patterns in our life. Because if it's up to the enemy, we won't have any. We won't have positive patterns. If it's up to the enemy, we will become so stagnant in our lives that we won't move forward. And then our mind and our heart become stagnant. If it's up to the enemy, we're not going to spend that time in prayer. It's so easy to get off track. It is. But by creating those micro habits, by putting on that new self, getting up in the morning, and when you open your eyes, thanking God for a new day. Amen. Creating those micro habits, it's across the world. We have, we have learned that if we start on a Monday, we're going to do something. If we're going to change our eating, we're going to change our exercise, we're going to change our study time, we're going to change our prayer time. Everyone says to start on a Monday, and they have more success. It's funny, people a few years ago started focusing on New Year's resolutions and the failure of the New Year's resolutions. And then I've watched that grow. We focus more on failure than we do on success. Hmm. But let's sit back and let's take a look at success. We have success. We have success as a family. We have successes as culture. We have successes as parents, as children, as husbands, as wives, as brothers, as sisters. We succeed. But our culture has taught us to focus on the failures. So many people make New Year's resolutions. There's more success at New Year's resolutions in losing weight, in creating better habits, getting new jobs, starting bank accounts, spending time with God, going to church more. Right? That transformation, there's more success and there are ever are failures, but people focus on the failures. We learn, one of the places we learned this was in school. Anybody here ever get straight A's? After third grade? <laughs> what? I got straight A's up to third grade. Yes, after third grade. Don't believe it. Williams over there. And then what happens when you get a B? What happens if you get a C? What happens if you get a D? So you have, so we have seven classes today. So we have seven classes. You get six A's and a D. Some people lose their mind over that D. Right? I remember my son, he was in um, what's called International Baccalaureate. That sounds impressive. Ooh, that's good. Probably <laughs> smart. I don't know what it means, but it sounds good. Right? <laughs> so he's international baccalaureate. He's in sixth grade. His all of his classes are more than I ever studied in school, more advanced. And he comes home and he has a couple of C's. Well, he went from elementary school to high school level classes in middle school. That's what it, that's what it is. You're, you're studying advanced classes, right? <laughs> and he had a couple of C's. And him and his mom come home after the, the meeting, and, and he's, he's nervous. And I'm like, buddy, I'm so proud of you. He has A's, B's, and C's. He's kicking it, but he was told to be nervous. Right? Our culture tells him to be fearful. I want to celebrate. I'm like, let's go get some pizza. You did good. But he was taught to focus on the failures of the places where he didn't achieve as well. We can change that. We can. Put on the new self. Let's watch what happens. Focus on your success from a place of gratitude. That's the part about the new self. You see, the old self only succeeds when you're better than somebody else. Right? That's the old self. The old self only succeeds when you can look at somebody else to compare yourself to and that you're better than. The new self comes from a place of gratitude, and every success is met with thankfulness and elevation of others. Amen. See the difference? Amen. Kind of fun, isn't it? That's the authentic self, by the way. Truly being authentic, being who you were created to be, yes. that's the new self. Going back to that, it's Jesus Christ that we have the ability to do that. 
looking at the scriptures, according to these scriptures, according to God's own word, your new self is already created in righteousness and holiness of the truth. When you accept Jesus Christ, that new self that you get to grow spiritually maturing into is already created in righteousness and holiness. You're already there. Jesus covered it. Amen. He paid it. He's given it to you. So now you have the opportunity to choose to walk it out. It's up to you. You've already been given the gift. It's up to you. Moving forward in 20, uh, moving forward, 2019 can either be a burden for you to carry, a crutch to keep you, to hinder you, or it can be something very different. It can be an amazing experience for you to grow from and to celebrate. What do you do moving forward? Do you allow the things of 2019 to hinder you? Do you fix your eyes on the places that you have fallen short or the trials that you have faced and allow them to keep you where you've been in that state of fear? Or do you do something else? Do you choose something else? Do you choose to look back and count it joy? Do you choose to look back and look at the lessons that you have learned? Look at the things that you have survived. Look at what you have experienced and have only grown stronger from it. Do you allow 2019 to be a crutch? Or do you use it to grow as God has called you to grow? Which one do you want? I'm not asking you to answer I'm asking you to ask the other parts. How do you want to move forward? Looking at that, <clears throat> I want to show, so I, I'm, I'm going to take it for granted that everybody here wants to grow. I am. I'm going to take for granted, and, and if you don't, I love you just as much. But if you do, let's take a look at a few things. First thing I know for myself, I need to get my mind right. So the next scripture is John 10, 27, and 28. Looking at John, you know for a fact that you're a child of God, right? And that nothing can nor is allowed to snatch you out of his hands. God actually put in his word, my sheep hear my voice. And I know them. And they follow me and I give unto them eternal life. And they shall never perish. Neither shall any man, anything, anyone, nothing, pluck them out of my hand. Nothing. They follow me. Jesus says that we know his voice and we follow him. Following him, part of that is recognizing the things that we've experienced in 2019. We have the opportunity of counting it all joy. We have the opportunity of finding that gratitude of the things that we've experienced. Knowing that we will never perish and that nothing can snatch us out of his hand. Amen. This is me getting my head right. This is where, this is, I have to go to God. I can't trust me on my own. Follow me on that. I don't know if you can relate with that, but I can't. I can't trust me. I will doubt. I will succumb to fear. I will self-impose limitations on, on me based on nothing. Based on nothing but feelings and emotions or something that I saw in the news or a movie. I will, I will self-impose limitations and doubt. But when I go to God, when I go to God, something changes. Those limitations aren't there. I can, I'm allowed to be afraid. What do I do with that fear? Do I succumb to it? Do I buy into it? I had a sweet, sweet lady give me this, this beautiful grace that says, trust in the Lord. Or do I do that? Do I trust in God or do I trust in the world? It's my choice. Isn't it? Yes. Because I promise you, you're going to trust in something. You will. You will. You will trust in something. You will either trust in God, you will trust in the Lord, or you'll trust in the world. It's your choice. According to Him, 
No one can snatch us from his hand. I've, I've learned and I have grown to learn. And it's something that I embrace almost every day. Some days I forget. There's some days I choose not to. But almost every day, I embrace his truth over my own. And it shows within how I respond. It shows in how I see things. It shows in my responses. It shows in my motives. Follow me? Second part, God will never leave you nor forsake you. This was a big issue with me. I had abandonment issues. That doesn't make sense for a man. Men, we don't feel things like that. Huh. We don't ask any man out of I don't have abandonment issues. I ain't afraid of nothing. <laughs> I'm serious. You should see the man I get to work with. They're so puffed up. <clears throat> it's cute. I just want to hug them. I want to hug them until they come. <laughs> I've been a fighter my whole life. I just didn't know that I was fighting this because I was terrified. I was fighting because I was scared to death. Most of you don't know my story. I couldn't trust. I didn't know how to trust. I didn't know what that meant. And the men that were in my life definitely couldn't trust them. Ooh, 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 that's a whole other story. So abandonment issues from a child actually grew into a man, and I still functioned as a result of those fears and those discomforts. I just didn't know that I was allowed to say it. I didn't know that I was allowed to go to somebody and say, I'm afraid. I don't want to be left. So I put on this armor, and I hardened my heart and I made myself as tough, as tough, and as tough as I possibly could. I wanted to eat a tank for breakfast. Right? And there was no way could I ever admit any weakness. I couldn't even ask for instruction someplace because that would show weakness. Make any sense? I couldn't ask for directions or redirections because what if I didn't understand it? Then I'd look stupid, and that means I'm weak. No, I was terrified. I was terrified because something changed. That change was Jesus Christ. That change was the Holy Spirit. That change was, no, I'm afraid, and it's okay. He's like, yeah, Kenny, I created you for fellowship. I created you for relationships. You're supposed to be in relationships. Oh. So my fear is okay? Yeah, your fear is okay. What you're dealing with it? Yeah, we're going to talk about that. Right? But he'll never leave us. Moving forward, the next scripture is... Where do we go? Are we in Hebrews? Hebrews 13.5. Right? Let your conversation be without... I can't even pronounce that word. Covetness. Covetness. Thank you. And be content with such things as ye have. For he hath said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. Covetness. Thank you for pronouncing that word. Oh, yeah. 30 years ago, there was no way I would have admitted not knowing that word. I would have just changed the word I'll get this in front of it. <laughs> now, I don't know what that word is. Covetness. Make sure that your character is free from the love of money. Covetness. Coveting other people's things, other people's possessions. Coveting. Right? That's where your heart is. Oh, I gotta have that. I gotta have that. Why? Because the Joneses have it. The Joneses have it. I have that. What? What? That was me. Oh, straight up. Yeah. Well, what is that? Well, that's where I found my work. You see, that's where I found my identity out there. Because I was too scared to, to recognize that God actually loved me. And he would never leave me or forsake me. I never had that. Okay. So I start growing in trust. Remember, these three, these three sets of scriptures are about me getting my head right moving forward. The third one is Matthew 11, 28 through 30. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am meek and lowly in heart. And ye shall find rest unto your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. My yoke I'm sure most of us have, have been taught what that means. He's literally saying the way that he does things, the way that he lives, the way that he's submitted. He uses this because he was talking to people who are familiar with farming. A yoke goes around an oxen, right? right? Now, imagine putting a yoke 
around your neck. And it's actually lighter than what the world offers, and it's custom fitted to you. You are going to submit to something. You will. Whether it's the television, the news, your job, people, or God. You're going to submit. I like his yoke. It's more comfortable than the burden of life. It fits a whole lot easier. And his way of doing things makes more sense today than I could ever have imagined. Anybody here have control issues? Don't raise your hand. <laughs> I know I do. <laughs> it's hilarious. I want to control everything. Nah, not as much as I used to. Used to? Absolutely. Because I was terrified. I didn't know I was afraid. You could have asked anybody, I wasn't afraid of anything. I did not know I was afraid. That sounds goofy, but I promise you it's really wild when I discovered it was. It was freedom because I changed my yoke. I did. Yes. His yoke is light. Yes. Me lifting, elevating somebody else instead of me having to be right. Hmm. Me listening to somebody else, even if I know I'm right, and still not having to say that I'm right. Hmm. right. Ooh, that's different. <laughs> that's kind of wild letting go of that one. I was, man, I've been stressed out. But you don't understand. Let me explain. Right? No, not so much. Change my yoke. It's not always about me. That's kind of new. That's kind of wild. That's different from the world. So these, these sets of scriptures, just these three looking at this, they'll never leave us nor forsake us. Right? His yoke is easy and his burden is light, his way of doing things. And then back at John, following him. We're his children. Are these scriptures true? Yes. Seriously, are they true? Are they completely true? Yes. Huh. Kind of trustful? Yes. Do you remember how I described trust? Right? Having a positive belief, and I'm just going to say it, about God's intentions and his motives toward us for potential risk is involved in following him. Do you, can I trust in these scriptures? Yes. Are these truths? Okay. So if I can trust in them, that means moving forward into 2020, it's going to shut. You're going to see little little tweaks, little tweaks in my focus, in my tone, in my words, in my, my actions, in my motives. If I'm embracing this and trusting this and recognizing that I am cherished by God, you're going to see it. You're going to see it in my rhythm. You're going to see it in my character. Does that make sense? Amen. I love that. I love that opportunity. You see, 2019 only becomes a burden to carry or a crutch to lean on if we trust the world more than we trust God. If I trust what the world says more than I trust God, 2019 is a burden that I will talk about for the rest of my life. 2019 is a crutch so that I don't have to get up in the morning and actually seek God and wave my eyes and to go to gratitude. But if I trust this, trust. Yes. You won't hear that tone about 2019. You're going to hear the things that I've learned or how I've grown or God has blessed me or gratitude within things. I know that 2019 has had so many challenges and so many tragedies for so many of us. It really has. Loss of the most precious people in our lives, sickness across the board. Absolutely. Yes. Yet we're still here. You see, because of God and His Son, Jesus Christ, each one of us has the Holy Spirit living inside of us, and that makes us different. That makes us totally different than the rest of the world who doesn't have that. That difference, for those of us who yes to trusting God and accepting Jesus, we're able to look at 2019 with a grateful heart and count it all joy. We know that our loved ones are in the everlasting presence of the Most High God and that one day we will see them again. 
we also know that our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. And we also know that we can count it all joy. We know this because of Him. And we can walk in that because of Him, because of His Son, because of His Holy Spirit living inside of us. We know this. The next scripture is James 1, verse 2 through 4. My brother, I count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations, knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience, but let patience have her perfect work, that ye may be perfect and entire, or in other words, would be complete, wanting nothing. Wanting nothing. That amazes me. Wanting nothing. Spending time with my brother Paul in Scripture and his writings, when he says, I am content. I have had much and found content. I have had little and nothing. And I am content. Yes. Wanting nothing. Yes. We go through life. God has given us this. He created the universe for you. He created you. He knows the plans that he has for you. He loves you. You are his beloved child. He loves you so much that his, he sent his son Jesus to pay and to die so that we have the gift of reconciliation and for the resurrection of Jesus so we have the gift of the Holy Spirit and get to live under the new covenants. And that is this. Letting it have to work so that you may be perfect. And what that means is that you're mature. Amen. Yes. Remember I was talking earlier about I didn't have the men in my life to, to, to teach or to shape or to love and to show me that I can trust. I was terrified. So I just hardened myself. I was scared. I was scared. Oh my gosh. My mom got back together with my dad. I didn't know him until I was right at 12. So she got back together with him. Woo! That was an adventure and a half. I was scared to come home. I didn't want to come home. I didn't want to come home. The environment didn't want to come home. If I did something, if I even thought about doing something wrong, I was terrified what was going to happen. But then I also learned it didn't matter if I did anything wrong or not. I was still terrified to be in the house. That's not good stuff. And these are the men in my life, right? He wasn't the only one. I had two stepdads. Same thing. It didn't matter how straight and narrow I walked. I was still going to be punished in some way. It was still going to be my fault in some way. Right? That's what the world shows us. But our Father says that we can come to Him. Yes. I want to be the person, I want to be the man that when somebody makes a selfish choice or a wrong choice or a bad attitude or makes a mistake or does something, that they want to come to me and not hide from me. Right. Amen. Follow what I'm saying? Yes. That's where I want to be. I don't want to win by intimidation or fear. I want to elevate from love and grace. That's the maturity. You see, when we make mistakes in this maturity, what, what the, the writers in King James call perfection, it literally means mature. We've come to a place of understanding. We're going to make a mistake. We're going to have something, someplace we're going to stumble. Okay, do we hide from God with that and deny that? Do we hide from our brothers and sisters? Or do we live in such a place showing Christ's love that we run to Him? Amen. That we run to God. Oh, God, man, I made so many bad choices 2019. I am so sorry. And allow for that contrite heart to just pour it out and celebrate because he's celebrating with you. He's crying over you. And he's not crying because he's disgusted with you. He's crying because he's so excited that you came running back into his arms. That's the God that you need to have. Does that make sense? Not according to the world. But it doesn't here, does it? It makes sense. We come and we lay our burdens down at his feet. That's maturity. 
have a, a, an author that wrote, he says, it's not so much about anything ever needing to be fixed as much as nothing ever needs to be hidden. The more I walk in that openness, the less stuff I have to fix. It's amazing what God does for us. Making those paths straight. Growing in that. Therefore, counting it all joy, choosing to live in the spirit by faith, hope, and love. I have an invitation for us. I have an invitation for every single one of you. That you, I invite you to boldly and authentically walk into the year 2020 with your eyes wide open and with your heart full of gratitude. Amen. That's my invitation. And say that you all bring your people up. I invite each of you to do this so that you may live in your true identity as a child of God and continue to be the salt of the earth, the light on a hill, an ambassador for Christ so that whoever sees you and sees how you are living may see God in you and want that life for the very self. That's the light. I want people to see you and want it. I want them to see that spark in your eye, that joy in your face, that gratitude. When you face trials, when you face struggles, when you face anything, when you're celebrating life, you're coming to joy and you're growing. And when they see that in you, they want to know, how are you doing that? How are you at peace? Continue to be the salt of the earth. Continue to be that light on the hill. That's this invitation. Walking into 2020 with your eyes wide open, boldly and authentically, the way God created you, with His empowerment, His Son's gift, and the Holy Spirit living inside of you. Next scripture is Ephesians 4.12. Going with this, this is leading to the building up of the body of Christ until we all attain to the unity of the faith. Unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, again, a mature person, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. That's what we're called. That's how we're called to live. So when we face those struggles and we face those joys, we are reflecting God. We are showing Him through us and how we live and how we greet people and how we embrace people and how we carry one another, pray for one another, come along beside one another. This is what we look like. We look like Him. The last scripture today is Philippians 1, 9 and 10. In this I pray that your love may abound yet more and more in knowledge. Paul is praying for us. And I pray this for every single one of you. That your love may abound yet more and more in knowledge and in all judgment that ye may approve things that are excellent. That ye may be sincere and without offense till the day of Christ. That's my prayer for you. At this time, I'm going to ask right where you are. If you have anything to lay at the altar, the altar is always open in this house. Is one of the things that I love to share. The altar is always open. But join me in prayer and asking God that we walk boldly.